I was in the sauna and listening to Deutschlandfunk, which is my favorite German radio station, and they reported from a particular person from Amsterdam who created global projects with pure creativity. And creativity is the one thing we claim at NOAA to be good at. So when I heard the story of Mark, I said, I have to call this guy and he has to talk to my NOAA friends about his yeah, day to day. Well, it's a hobby, really. You know, it's outside your advertising job. So Mark is going to give you a very important presentation. And we don't do this a lot. Huh? We have like out of 500 speakers, maybe two or three, and you're one of them who are not a founder or a CEO or a startup, but they're talking to you about a concept. And this time it's creativity. Mark, please come on stage. I'm honored Thank you. to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for your warm welcome. Um, I'm in the business of uh, making this world a better place via radical creative interventions. And I think that we all can and should be in the business of healing the world. Uh, well, you know why, it's in the news every day, the world is on fire. But the good news is, people love healing companies and we need quite a few of them. So my mini pitch to you is, um, make this world a better place, win the Nobel Prize, and as a consequence, you might sell something. And I checked for you with the Nobel organizations, all of you here can win one. It never happened, but a company or a brand can win a Nobel Prize. Yeah. Um, so the thing is, however, that the route towards becoming a healing company is something different than running a normal company. It can be quite stressful. Um, when I was an ad man, I thought sales targets were stressful. But solving real-world problems, yeah, nothing can compare to the stress that generates. So I got this great tip from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, who told me that you actually can train yourself to absorb and release the horror. And I train a switch every day, a switch that makes me feel in control, so that I can handle the horrific situations you will end up in. And, um, I do this by picking a sad news story from the news every day. I try to solve it for 10 minutes, and then I let it go. And it works, really. Uh, it helps me calm down my stress on a day-to-day -day basis. So now I'd like to take you to one of my adventures that didn't take 10 minutes, but took well over two years. And it all started when I read an article in a national newspaper in which the director of Terre des Hommes, and Terre des Hommes is an, is an anti-child exploitation organization, told the reporter that their shelters in the Philippines were flooded with children who were victim of something I'd never heard about, really. These children had to perform sexual acts in front of a webcam, and men from other countries watched and paid. And the director of that organization called upon the readers to donate money so that they can build more shelters. But I thought, hmm, imagine the size of this new industry. For all those men with a sexual preference for children, there would be no barrier left. So I thought, we have to attack the demand side. So I called the director of Terre des Hommes and asked him, shouldn't we also do something about the demand side? And he said, yes, great idea. Uh, but I had no idea yet. So that night, I went online to check whether the phenomenon is really there. Yes, within five minutes, I was chatting with an eight-year-old boy, my son's age at that time, and he was clearly not sitting there to talk with me about his progress in school. And after a more thorough search, we found thousands of kids who had to do this. Really. Um, but yeah. I didn't want to do an, uh, an awareness campaign. I wanted to solve the issue. I wanted to solve the problem. Personally, I hate awareness campaigns. Um, but we wanted to bring a solution. Uh, but before you can solve something, you have to have a deep understanding of the problem. So we spent months and months of analyzing legal texts, talking to uh, victims, talking to experts, etc. 
Um, and then we found out that the problem was way bigger than we thought. At any given moment, there are 750,000 men online with a sexual preference for children. Any, any given time. Leading to tens of thousands of kids being abused in the Philippines alone on a daily basis. Uh, and when you see this, you are so committed to destroy that uh, demand side. And then we had to find a sort of solution. What solution do we want to promote? And after a thorough search, we found out that the simple thing we needed to change was the way of policing. We wanted to shift the way of policing from a reactive style of policing to a proactive style of policing. We wanted police forces all over the world uh, patrolling the websites where these trades are happening. Reactive policing works fine in countries like ours. You know, if my kids are being abused by the webcam, I go to the police, report the crime, and police forces take action immediately. Children in the Philippines, or in other developing countries, can't go to the police, um, so nothing happens. And then we had this very simple idea of uh, promoting the solution to the police and to politicians to free up budgets by identifying 1,000 predators from as many countries as possible. I thought if we can uh, identify 1,000 predators, police forces all over the world can easily take it over and arrest hundreds of thousands every year. But of course, we had to take some precautions. There the stress thing comes in again. Um, I rented a, f a warehouse under a fake name a few hundred meters away from my office. Uh, people in my office had no idea what we were doing. I even had to fire a few people so that they could work on this covert operation for, uh, for some time, uh, well over a year. I set up a, a non-traceable internet connection via Kyrgyzstan to Manila. We set up a fake agency in Switzerland to disguise the money trail. Um, and a few other things to make sure that um, it was a covert operation, because you never know. And the idea was, let's go online, pose as a 10-year-old Filipino girl, and then we will identify them. Um, uh, and that went pretty well, because the moment we logged in as a 10-year-old Filipino girl, men swarmed at us, really. Uh, but they all wanted us to turn on the webcam, and then they would see, uh, you know, us sitting there. So we thought, we have to put a kit behind the webcam. And that's when we came to the idea of developing a little robot girl named Sweetie. And Sweetie was a robot girl that we could control her every movement. Um, I will show you how it worked in a short uh, movie clip later. But this is the same warehouse where you see my colleague on the left side controlling the robot, the second chatting with the predator, and the third one, identifying the predator without hacking his computer. And within 10 weeks, we had 20,000, 20,000, 20,000 men from all over the world who were willing to pay for sex with our sweetie. And then we thought, wow, uh, we were now able to identify 1,000 predators from 71 countries, it was time to bring it to the press. Uh, and here you see me, after making my first call to the German press agency, the DPA, um, because it was a little tricky. We were an NGO, an advertising company, or whatever, um, but we wanted to make sure that the press would report this. Uh, so I called the press and said, we are about to present to you the biggest sexual abuse case in recent history. And it was tricky because it wasn't a legal case yet. But they all came, as you can see uh, uh, on our smiles here, uh, from the Chinese state television to China. But we also made sure that we had headlines in every single country. And this is how it all came together. I just wanted to add, uh, so, that we, uh, so that I don't have to go um, back on stage after the short clip, a police forces took over. It's now on the agenda of almost every country in the world. It's the biggest crime in the Philippines. And um, before I leave, I have only 10 seconds left before I have to start the movie clip. Please use your sacred gift to make this world a better place. 
I assure you, it will be a big win for you as a person, for, you, for your brands, for your company, and of course, for the world. Thank you so much. Here's the short movie clip, how it all came together. My Thank you. I'm 10 years old. I live in the Philippines. Every day, I have to sit in front of the webcam and talk to men, just like tens of thousands of other kids. The men ask me to take off my clothes. They play with themselves. They want me to play with myself. As soon as I go online, they come to me. But what they don't know, I'm not real. I'm a computer model made piece by piece to track down this man who do this. Webcam child sex tourism is a new phenomenon that's spreading like an epidemic. Men from rich countries pay children in poor countries to perform sexual acts in front of webcams. We estimate that tens of thousands of kids, some of them only six years old, are abused behind cams in the Philippines alone. But instead of hundreds of thousands of convictions, we could only find six men who have ever been charged. Our solution, proactive policing. To stop predators, we need to patrol the websites where they commit these crimes and catch them in the act. We went undercover posing as a 10-year-old Filipino girl on public chat rooms. Sweetie is a computer model we created to look and move like a real girl. I'm not real. Men think she's sitting in front of a webcam in the Philippines, but actually, we were operating her from a warehouse in the capital of the Netherlands. In just 10 weeks, we identified 1,000 predators from 71 countries. Instantly, Sweetie became world news. Webcam sex tourism. Investigators tracked down their addresses and photos and handed them over to Interpol. She is the weapon against online sex tourism. 46 Australians have been handed to international police. I'm, of course, very happy for Tsarisoms that they have made this case. One billion people have seen the Sweetie campaign. Webcam child sex tourism is now a globally recognized problem. But what we're most proud of, predators are being stopped. 17 people from Britain have been arrested. And children are being saved. Around 15 children aged 6 to 15 were rescued. Thank you. So there is a world beyond EBITDA and venture capital rounds. And we all, or many of us have children. I have two daughters. And I'm... I'm Thankful that the world has people like Mark who have nothing really to do with problems of people in Philippines, especially small children, but they take responsibility and they help our political leaders to do a better job. So thank you for that. Really, really honored to have you. And there are more projects. There's Making Friends Across Religion. Go on YouTube. This man interviewed the top 12 religious leaders of the world, including the Pope, the Dalai Lama, and so on and so forth, and you made them talk. So go on YouTube and check the second campaign, Making Friends Across Religion.